Grant Dania now. It's Grant Dania. the gold logie this year. Oh my god, it's Grant Dania. And our mum, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. And George, affectionately known as Large Sarge. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. And George. Uh, and minus Grant. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Oh, my God. He came back for a week and then he had to um, head off and, and film something exciting. But he has sent me in a really nice little clip. Um, Beautiful. So he's here with us in spirit through a message on the phone. I like this. Let's see what it is because I haven't vetted this yet. So this will be interesting. Oh, dear. Yeah. So um, I'm with uh, five-time Bathurst winner and multiple uh, Supercar Series champion, Garth Tando, big fan of the It's All True podcast, Garth. Is uh, is that right? Uh, the, the stats were right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's your favourite episode? <laughs> uh, this one. <laughs> it's because you're on it. Am I? Yeah. Uh, we talk about all sorts of things, like aliens. Are you a believer? Uh, I, yes, I am actually. Mm. There's got to be something else out there, doesn't there? See, there, now, we're, now we're talking the same language. Yeah, I mean, well, there's Actually, billions of planets this. in billions of galaxies, yeah. right? Yeah. We can't be the only one. Exactly. I was just talking about this with my kids the other day, that we there's, how can we be the only ones? I don't know that there'd be other humanoids out there, but there'd be some form. You'd have, have to been, think so. Have you been probed? Uh, um, of all the supercar drivers, who would you like to probe <laughs> you the most? Well, I haven't been probed in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Wow. Um, um, I'm not sure um, I think, um, yeah. who I would like to probe. I wouldn't like to probe any of them. No, no, no they're all grotty, dirty yeah, you know, race yeah, car drivers. Yeah. 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 Um, of of all my performances behind the wheel, which which one was your favourite? Uh, none so far. <laughs> my career's not over. That's yeah, there's still a chance. It's still going. There's still a chance. <laughs> no, I think, actually, I think you did a very good job at this year's Bathurst 12-hour, Grant. Good. I think you did. I think you did a great job. I think you are... And, uh, and I hate being serious around you, but I think you are highly underrated as a race car driver. I, someone rang me to tell me you said nice things about yeah, me no, uh, gonna... on the commentary. And i got to be honest, it made me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> That's exactly good. When we actually get serious with each other, we think there's something wrong. <laughs> so I'll stop doing that now. <laughs> That's, we go back to being our normal us because that's, that's more us. We're cuter when we're uh, when we're calling each other names. Yeah, when we're just ripping into each other. <laughs> what would you what, future upcoming episodes? Is there a topic you'd like us to cover? Um, male menopause? Any, anything? <laughs> is this more of a window into what you're experiencing right now? Well, you you got teenagers coming too, don't yeah. you? You're moving into the teenage period. Yeah. How are you going, Dad? We have kids very similar ages. Um, uh, and yeah, it's a challenge. Um, I have a twelve and a half year old daughter. So it's things are starting to get serious there, and mm. um, and the dad jokes are becoming less funny. They're landing flat, aren't yeah, they? they? I've noticed land with a really frustrated look. I'm not really happy about that no, either. No, me neither. So I feel like the next six to eight years are going to be bumpy times. Yeah. Bumpy times. Are you ready for the first date? Oh, we actually talked about that the other night. Actually, my daughter asked, "What will you do?" when you meet my first boyfriend. I said, well, other than answer the door naked with a shotgun, I'm just going to be polite. <laughs> As I pointed at his face. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm sure he'll be comfortable <laughs> with that for that first meeting. Thank you for this precious insight to parenthood. Uh, we really appreciate it, Garth Tander. It's a pleasure as uh, always. Thank you, Grant. Wow. Oh, my that God. Beautiful. That's quite funny. Um, there's a lot of noise happening in the background, so he uh, he's obviously filming something exciting with Garth Tander, so I can't That's say cool. too much. Hopefully he's not branching off and doing a, a dad podcast without us, Chez. Oh. I can see GT and GD doing something special there. That'll be fun. Oh, that's quite funny what you just did, GT and GD, yeah. Yeah. Very um, um, clever. It is. It is indeed. Um, and we, we allow Grant to be away the episodes because, um, look, let's face it, there is life outside of the It's All True podcast for at least one of us, and that is Grant. Um, <laughs> he will be back. We, he will be he back. Will he be only, back. He yeah. only um, flew out yesterday and he is coming back tonight. So it's just because we tried to squeeze in some records so you could go on holidays, George. Yeah, I've got um, two weeks off. What the so hell? We're I just... Well, in... Um, Radio World, there's that survey break, and mm. um, I don't get to take that survey break, but, um, oh, my gosh, an orb just flew. What the heck? 
an orb just flew over your head twice. Did you feel it? No, but I was waiting for you to tell me, where's the... I am really hoping that the recording picked that up. It kind of flew through your head. Anyways, where was I? On survey break. Um, Yeah, just a couple of weeks off to um have a rest from the busyness that has been the um, beginning of a year in radio. So we're just mm. going to be... um. Hanging out down uh, sort of the coastline of New South Wales and Queensland, up and down, up and down, travelling about. So that'll be good. Solving nice. Rubik's Cubes, maybe. Not. Oh, my. Yes. Bloody Rubik's Cubes. Have you had any more backlash around that or are people um, saying, hey, no. we accept you? It's all good. I did get a, a message last night from um, our podcast reviewer, Ellie, who we had on um, the podcast, I don't know, whatever season way back, and she said she'd walked into a room and there was a Rubik's Cube on the ground. Like it was just like. Interesting. Yeah. And we've had this real weird connection, Ellie and I, while we're talking about it. So um, I, you know. I'm doing my medium stuff um, and I just had like a very strong message from her grandmother. Um, So I kind of reached out to her and I said um, a few things to her about, you know, that I'd heard from her grandmother and, um, and we spoke a bit about the grandmother and I think we both cried and, yeah, it was all very powerful and interesting. Um, Unbelievable. And I think... This is the most beautiful, perfect segue to say congratulations on your high distinction and topping the class for your first medium test. Wow. Yes. How do you know that? Because you sent me a text message. Oh, did I? Right. Okay. I'm I a medium, there. actually. I'm reading <laughs> your mind right now. Um, yeah, it was um, it was really big. So I'd been preparing all week last week for um a group reading test and I'd been studying for it. And, and then an hour before the test, um, I got an email from my teacher saying, okay, you've got one hour to go before you big one-on-one testing, which is different to the group testing. And I lost all my confidence. Like right in that moment, I thought, oh my gosh, how can I get, how can I get these two different tests? so mixed up and I looked in my calendar and I'd written the one-on-one test down. I just, I just had forgotten. So wow. um, I was really nervous when I went into it and yep. um, it was, it was really cool. So the first we had to do like a two 20 minute reading sessions for two separate people. And the first lady um, who who came on like straight away, I knew it was her grandparents, um, especially her grandmother who wanted to connect with her. And so I just kind of gave her everything that I was getting. And I don't know if they were told that they weren't allowed to give us any validation or anything, but she gave me nothing. So I was like, right. Um, so I, you know, it's your grandmother and, um, I said I saw tiny little fairy statues um, in her garden. That was kind of one of the ways that she wanted to validate um, that, you know, that that she was there. Yeah. Um, and this woman was sitting there just like didn't say anything. And so I'm thinking, oh, my God. Nodding away. Wow. Am I? Oh, anyway, they were coming through quite strong, so I didn't question it. Um and I just said, I think, you know, that the grandmother um, hadn't been passed for very long, um, but there was also a male there who was grandfather and um, I, I was just so adamant that it was her mum's mum. Um, yeah. I said that I saw her in the hospital um, when it was time to um, to say goodbye to her grandmother and the grandmother, you know, gave some really lovely messages and um, and then, yeah, I realized that she was crying and she said, my grandmother died in January and I was really hoping that, um, that she would come through. And so I was Gosh. like, oh, great. And so I lent in more and I said, 
um, are you a teacher? And she's like, yeah, I'm a teacher. Uh And I just heard the grandmother like saying, um, you know, she's a wonderful teacher. She's a great teacher. I always knew she was going to be a teacher, just so animated. And, um, yeah, and she kind of, um, she validated that, yes, she was there at the hospital bed. So everything that I was describing for her made perfect sense. Um, She was getting very teary because the grandmother really wanted to say how proud she was. Um, the grandfather wanted to say something about, um, the, her brother, like I kept hearing the word brother. So I said to her, do you have a brother? And is there an issue with your brother? Because your grandfather is, you know, is raising that. And she said, yes, my, I'm raising my, my brother's children. And that made me feel really teary because then, um, I just kind of, pictured the grandmother and the the grandfather being like, yes, we're getting our messages through to her. Mm. Um, So I was able to pass on the messages and it was just really special. And then she said to me um, that I'd mentioned fairies um, earlier on and she said uh, it was just two weeks ago that she actually took tiny little angel statues from her grandmother's garden and put them into Mm. her garden. So she said, that Jeez. it weren't fairies, they were little angels, and uh, and that yeah. made perfect sense. So that was brilliant. It was really good. Yeah. Um, then I had to go straight into another one, and I was still beaming off the first. You know, it was really powerful. Straight into another one, and uh, it was a very different experience, um, which I can't go into, you know, too much detail. But right. um, when I was doing it, I just had this woman pop up in my mind from I don't know where, just kind of if you can imagine, she just kind of popped up in my mind. She's like, I'm such and such a sister um, and I had osteoporosis and you need to tell her that it's very important that she has her bone health checked and that she has, you know, um, increases her calcium. It was like really strong. So I just kind of said, you know, do you have a sister who's passed? No. Do you know anyone whose sister's passed? No. I I was like, I don't even know what to do with this. But anyway, this woman wants me to tell you that, you know, you need to up your calcium, yeah. um, which is quite ironic because I think the sponsor of the podcast this, you know, this <laughs> week is Ostalin. I was just thinking of that. Um, but it was really strange. And then she was kind of like, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for having me. Bye. Continue with your reading. Wow. And, and, it, and the person you were reading, like, it, that didn't resonate at the time? No. Okay. No. And so I... I just gave it to her and I was like, I have no idea, but maybe down the track one day this will make sense to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, I I picked up um, on her grandfather and there was another male and um, she was quite coy, so didn't give a lot away, um, you know, during the reading. So I felt when I finished it, I thought, yeah, I did a really bad job there. I think Mm -hmm. I was just probably quite harsh. I mean, I gave what I got. Um yep. but as it turns out, the um one of the spirits was blocking another spirit from coming through. Um for a particular reason that has um become a lot clearer to me on email. Um huh. so I've been emailing back and forth with this with this woman and yeah. Yeah, so it was so actually... one out of the three was really, really good, and as a result of this whole experience, you've ended up topping the class still. Yeah, I got one hundred percent. Wow! So I'll read Amazing. you my. Amazing. I'll read you my report card, right? So, Please do. um, so five out of five for overall experience. How much healing and comfort they have to, you know, mark mark down. Ten out of ten. How much evidence? Ten out of ten. How much value? Ten out of ten. This was one of the most amazing readings I've ever had. She connected with spirit right away and brought forth so much evidence. She made me cry and brought me so much peace. Thank you again. Uh, wow. And she even wrote me a testimonial, which was <laughs> really lovely. Yeah. So she said that I could use it. So this was one of the most amazing readings um, I've ever had. She connected with spirit right away, brought forth so much evidence. She made me cry, um, brought me so much peace. Thank you again. She signed it. Um, Reading number two, five out of five for overall experience. How much healing and comfort? 10 out of 10. How much evidence? 10 out of 10. How much value? 10 out of 10. Additional feedback. She was absolutely fantastic. 
short testimonial. She was so amazingly accurate and the messages she was giving were so spot on and something I deeply needed to hear. I would love to support Shezzy in the future with anything she may need. She has a beautiful gift. Wow. Yeah. So That's amazing. So, I mean, when was the first time you had an inkling that you had skills in this area? It was only recent, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you've gone from just recently having these feelings and then you're now topping the class, you're getting 100% mm. results. Is it becoming clearer to you what you might be able to do with this skill or are no. you still just in a holding pattern? I have absolutely no idea. Mm. Um, there was a lot of, there's a lot of other people that I'm doing the course with that do private readings and they charge, some of them, you know, are well established and they charge a lot for the readings. Um, but I think I said it to you last time we spoke about it. I don't, I don't picture myself doing that. I don't know. Mm. I feel it's like. It's a cool thing that you are able to do though. There's definitely, uh, I'm, there's definitely a big push for me. I don't know what exactly that is, but I'm just going with it. But I feel like it must be to be a mouthpiece or a spokesperson or something, I don't know, for this particular work or I don't know, because my TV background makes me think, you know, why would I have so much TV experience? Why would I not combine the two? Sure. Does that make sense? It does. That's kind of what I've been you know, kind of trying to work out, but I don't picture myself being like a TV medium. Um, that's not, no, I feel like it's something more wholesome. I don't know what that is, but mm. I don't know. You look forward to seeing where that goes. Um, yeah. That's incredible. What was the last thing that you got 100% in? Like would it have been uni or, or high school if you did get those results? I remember getting a high distinction at uni for script writing. Uh -huh. um, I wrote a play which was, uh, it was really well written. I was really proud of it and I remember getting a high distinction, but I don't remember ever getting 100%. Mm. Yeah. I mean, for me, it, it was drama, um, year 12. Uh, it was never anything like academic. It was always the creative subjects. But, yeah. oh, what a feeling when you get 100% on something. It's Did you like, get 100%? Yeah. Yeah, I've year got 100%. 12 drama. Drama, music, um, I was quite good at those two things, but everything else was um, not amazing. But, uh, yeah, great feeling when you get that 100%. Do Nothing you know, we went to um, a musical on Saturday night. My niece was um, the lead in a um, musical up at Stanny's. And oh, yeah. Yes, and we walked out. I know I've made mention before of your face being up there, but uh -huh. Sunday was mucking up, so I walked out and was walking around looking at all the posters. Mm -hmm. And you were Uncle Festa in. I um, was. Yes, well, I was looking oh at all gosh. the names, and I saw Uncle Festa and the yeah. facials you were pulling. Ah. Uh. Hilarious. Such a fun show. Yeah, so I did that back in year nine and still to this day when I walk down the streets of Bathurst, um, everyone was like, oh, you played so many great roles, but when you played Uncle Festa, that was just the greatest. And I loved it. It was such a fun role to play. Um, yeah, he's very, very weird and is pulling faces. Had to wear a bald cap. That was cool. Um, I Yeah, loved that show. And, and, and the... Um, musical scene and theatrical scene, I guess, um, at those particular schools, McKillop and Stenny's, um, is so strong. Um, the shows and productions they put together are really, really great. One of the reasons why I went there. Um, so if you are a, a listener in the local area that we're talking about, Bathurst, um, Central West, well, not even Stenny's and McKillop, like all of the schools and the local theatre companies, a really strong theatre um, scene is there. So if you're into it, Go for it. There's some I don't great think, people there to help. I don't think you you youngins, mm. um, I don't think you youngins know how good you've got it because I was thinking back to my year nine, year eight, like I used to do lots of drama too and our shows were nothing like what. They're like high-end scale productions, aren't they? Yeah. Like there's a set, there's a proper sound system, there's an orchestra. 
Like uh, it's pretty professional when you, yeah. when you get down to it. Yeah. I didn't realize that they'd been going for so long. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just That's shows so you. Cool. I've been finished school and out of school for 27 years this year, someone told me. How does that make you feel? Uh, bloody old when somebody told me that. I was I'm like, 23. What? So, yeah, thanks. Sorry, um, I just, <laughs> I've been out of school for six years. Oh, do you know what? It is a weird thing. It feels to me most days like school was 20 years ago. Mm. Nearly 30, Shezzy. I can't believe that. That's just, that can't be right. That actually can't be right because I'm 44. So that would mean that I finished school and someone's got their maths wrong. Because if it was 30 years ago, nearly 30 years ago. Yeah, true. Oh, no, that is Hey, look, close. maybe oh, you're spot on. <laughs> oh, my God. But I think it means year 10. Um, regardless, mm. that's a really long time ago. So, mm. and I've got oh, a toddler. You know what? Whenever you bring up, like, math, maths and equations and numbers, my brain literally just shuts down. I completely shut off. I don't even acknowledge it. I'm just like numbers. They're jumbling up in a page in my head. Can't yeah, do right. it. Cannot do it. I think GD is a bit mm, similar. Yep. I was just thinking, yeah, he's uh, definitely like that. Yeah. Yeah. So but I'm that's, just glad I'm not. That's because know. something happened to you guys clearly at school or when you're trying to learn maths. Mm. There's a real fear element there. Well, I know there is with Grant. Um, and yeah. you you tell yourself I can't do it, and you just oh, I just can't do it. You know, yep. exactly. Uh, I think like in later high school, I had a really good teacher who was able to make me believe in myself. But then, yeah, moved moved on and went back to my old habits. But um, oh well, it is what it is. I'm hosting a podcast; doesn't require that much uh, <laughs> number knowledge, so we're all good. Well, it does because I just tried to get you to do it with math some and you couldn't do it. I'll be fired next episode. You watch. I would like to trial something mm-hmm. for this podcast. I think it would be really cool if one day we could um, get guests onto the show or listeners onto the show and simply play a game of, hang on, I've made an opener for it. Two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. Truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. Anybody who gets onto the show um, will give us simply two truths and a lie. And between you, GD, and myself, we try and decipher which one is the lie. How does that sound? Do you like that idea? Yeah, I love that idea. Okay. Just trying to think. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to play like a trial game? Yeah. I've got a couple here. Okay. Um, I'll read them out to you, and you've just got to simply figure out which one is the lie. And I thought, you know, it's all true. We should mm. be masters of knowing what is all true, right? Yeah, I agree. And you are like a psychic, so maybe you'll be able to <laughs> really know what is going on here. Okay. All right. Number one, Paul Gallen is my cousin. Number two. I was nearly cast in the Australian production of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And number three, I had to call triple zero uh, on Thursday, just gone. Doesn't really matter in podcast land, but Thursday just gone as we record this um, because a kid next door broke his leg. Which one of those is the lie? Paul Gallen is your cousin. Is he the football player? Person, yeah, um, Cronulla Sharks. He right. did play for them. He's now um, commentary with uh, NRL Channel Nine. Oh. Then we had nearly cast in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Bang. The uh, I think production. that that would be believable. Like I couldn't imagine, yeah. you know, you nearly being cast for that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm Ooh. thinking Paul Gallen is a lie. Paul Gallen is a lie. You would be incorrect. That is true. He's oh, a cousin what? of mine, and I didn't have to call the triple um, zero the other day because um, 
the neighbour broke their leg. No, I didn't have to do that. That was. The oh, lie. wait, I played that wrong. I only guessed one being a lie, but there was two lies. No, no, no. Two truths. And oh, a two lie. truths. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. The lie was the triple zero. <laughs> it's confusing. As a numbers guy, as a guy who's terrible with numbers, it's confusing for me too. But, but hang on uh, a second. So, just backtrack, okay? So you had to call triple zero for no, the neighbour. No, I said that I had to call triple zero, but that was a lie. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. Right. <laughs> Isn't it a fun, flowing, easy, interesting game for this podcast? Oh, my God. Do you know what? That's so much for my brain to, it's like, tricky. reckon with because mm. Grant left yesterday and and he, when he left, I ran out of gas. So we've had no hot water, okay? Oh, now no. we've had no hot water since yesterday and I said to him, and where's the tool to fix, you know, to to change over the gas bottles? Mm. And he was like, oh, it's um, in my ute. Well, that's okay. handy because the ute's parked in Orange, which is 40 oh, minutes oh, away um, at the airport, uh, which is fine because he comes back tonight. However, right. I have had to boil the jug for everything. Like the kids need a bath. I've had to boil the jug like and trying to oh, put in. No. Yeah. So I have not had a shower for two days and I f- just feel like I did not sleep very well last night because of this gas um, oh, problem. So I haven't, I didn't sleep well last night either. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? That is weird. That is kind of strange. In fact, a couple of other people in the office today said that they, sorry, more than a couple, most of the office said, did you get a terrible night's sleep? Yes. Is there something going on? Is there like weird things going on with the moon? Well, there is supposed to be a solar eclipse, but I don't understand any of that. No, I don't so, either. Um, but mine is purely I blame Grant for it. So, um, mm. Like so, most things, just yes. blame GD. <laughs> That's right. I do. It's really frustrating. I really would have liked to shower. So um, I'm glad that. Yeah, that nobody can smell me from there. Um, look, I yeah. love the game. I think the game yeah. is really good. You're going to have to play the promo for it again, like the song, the intro. Oh, would you like to hear it right now? Yeah, because it's really, okay. really cool. Yeah. Two truths and a lie. 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 The reason I didn't sleep well last night is because I was making that 15-second jingle. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I Paul Gallon's your cousin. Yeah, so he's a distant cousin. Um, oh. But, yeah, technically speaking, he is like a third or fourth cousin. Yeah. I only see him. This is really sad. I only see him at family funerals. Oh. Yeah. Well, that, that, look, that, let's be honest. That happens. That does happen. That happens, I think, in a lot of families because you get busy and you obviously you live a long way from um, mm. from where he lives. I don't know where he lives, but I'm guessing somewhere shame. down south. I mean, I'm such a big footy guy. I just would love to catch up and talk about the football and techniques on tackling and um, being a second rower and, you know, just furthering my football career. I'd love to have those chats with him, but unfortunately we can't. So. It is what it is. I feel like you're pulling my leg. Are you a massive yeah. football guy? No. Oh, fuck. What is going on here? There you go. Yeah, I'm not a football. I did play football. I was a second rower in um, when I went to high school, um, and I broke my nose in a trial match. Yeah, and the game was actually, um, yeah, it was the A's, B's, and C's up against each other. So the C's went up against the A's. I was obviously in the C's. Right. And um, we were playing just a trial match just to shape each other up and get ready. And um, whoever was going to win was going to get a free trip to Macca's. So the stakes were high. The Big a Macs were high. A free trip? What, as in like a, yeah. um, the bus or something? The whole team would get a trip down to Macca's and a free feed. From the Golden Arches. So the stakes were high and, um, yeah, I literally got absolutely smashed by obviously a very hungry A-grade player (laughs) and, yeah, broke my nose. And that was the end of my footy career because when you're a singer, when you're an actor, when you're a a, a podcaster, you need to breathe. You need your nose. You need. It's important. It is. Have you had any long-term problems with it since you broke it? 
Oh, not that I have investigated, but um, Carly has has mentioned to me that I snore horrendously. Like it's really annoying to put up with. Right. Um, so the past couple of nights, I have been on the couch. I've been like, "Look, I feel really bad. You're suffering. Like I'm I'm properly like going for it, snoring, and I I'm not aware. And you're yeah. Do you snore yourself awake? Like no, I've um, never I've never caught myself snoring. I've never done that. Really? Yeah, yeah. She she started taking those um, Lemmy gummies that one of the Kardashians have brought out. It's like a melatonin kind of gummy oh, that you take. Someone was talking to me about this last night. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Kardashian were ta- the Kardashians were taking them. Right. Yeah, they brought out this um range. So she started taking them, and she doesn't dream. Um, Carly, she ne- she never dreams, but now since she has taken these gummies, she's for- she's she's hitting the certain type of sleep that allows you to have dreams and to be in such that deep state of mind. Mm. And yeah, she's now having weird dreams, but then is being woken up by my snoring. So, um, to the couch for me for now. Oh my gosh, that's so. There's a mm. lot to unpack there. What she yeah. she never used to sleep deep enough to have like proper dreams. Yeah, a very light sleeper. So like right. anything, any kind of movement, any kind of sound in the house, around the house, in the room, she would just wake up instantly. Um, but I think, is it called REM? Does that sound yeah. familiar? Hitting REM? REM? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she's now finally hitting that um, state and uh, yeah, is actually starting to dream. In fact, last night she had a dream about us being in a weird house and we kept on getting woken up by the It's All True podcast. What? We were asleep and our podcast started playing. Oh, my God. Where's my... Strange, right? That's pretty cool. Maybe we could go to a haunted house. I don't know why I said that, but... Do a podcast from a haunted house. Imagine the orbs that would be there. Yeah. Although I I, I don't really believe in haunted houses, but... Somebody was saying to me that they heard seeing ghosts, you know, the ones that are kind of trapped in loops. Um, Maybe oh, yeah. there's like a break in the matrix, um, mm-hmm. which I thought was quite an interesting analogy. So it's like yeah. you're actually seeing someone who is in a different realm um, or a different dimension or something. It's just you know, for some reason you can see it. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, hey, um, I've got to point out a couple of things from where I'm sitting. Mm. First of all, love the neon sign in the background. Yay. It's, true. it's great. Um, head over Finally. to the YouTube to see that. But also, um, your, from where you're sitting, your jumper looks like it says the word dick. What does your jumper actually say, though? My jumper says Dior. 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 <laughs> Dior. When you have the microphone over the R and half oh. of the O, what's that? What is that? What's the thumbs up all about? <laughs> my gosh. Did you press anything? No. I was showing you my Dior. Hey, I, it's I all true. Up, the podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Do a thumbs up to the camera. Did that do something? That's so weird. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, it looks like your shirt says dick when, you, <laughs> when your microphone's held that way. I feel like there's someone in this recording room with us. Like, just, you? yeah. Like, in your room or, like, in both of our rooms, both of our studios? In both of our studios. <laughs> you looking around freaking out. This is really cool. That was so bizarre. That's interesting. Um, if you if you do meetings on Zoom and you yeah. had this happen before, let me know because I saw the other day I saw some um balloons go up like on a screen when I was having um my lesson and my my mediumship teacher was like, Whoa, that's weird. Did anybody press that? And everyone was like, No. no. Yeah, so I feel like it's something built into Zoom, but it's very random, isn't it? What did you say that would prompt it? It was almost like a cue, wasn't it? Well, it was just a thumbs up, and I was talking about dick. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up for up. dick. 
thumbs up. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, it says no. Dior. Which, Dior. Yeah, um, which sounds like really fancy pants, but it's it's not fancy pants. It's a right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd. That's kind of funny that that you'd have a jumper that just says that says dick. dick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are jumpers out there that can do that. Mm. Um, I had an awkward retail moment over the weekend. What happened? Well, I'm in the market at the moment for a body pillow. I am uh, going to, well, I have, I've got Carly, a body pillow. Have you ever heard of a body pillow? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I had one when I was pregnant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really I got good it from for pregnancy. Kmart. Is she pregnant? Yeah. No, no, not that oh, I know no. of. Um, but yeah, good for pregnancy, good for back pain. Um, so yeah, getting that as a gift for her as a little prezi, um, shopped around different pillow stores, ended up finding a great one, 50 bucks. Let's go. Woohoo. Went to the, um, register, made the transaction and it would have been like 9am Saturday morning, clearly morning. And I say, oh my gosh, thank you very much for your help. I really appreciate it. And she goes, oh, no worries at all. Have a great afternoon. Right. At 9am in the morning. Right. So and I go, oh, do I say, like, what do I say? But I just was like, yeah, you too. Thank you. And just walked off and just went, that's so awkward. I feel sorry for that for that person, you know? Mm. They're trying so hard. They did so well up until that very last moment where they said good afternoon at 9am in the morning. <laughs> yes. I see. I do that stuff all the time. I'll pick up yeah. the phone and I'll say, oh, good morning. And they're like, uh, it's 3 p.m. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, right. So did you mark that person down, like give them a, you know, a critique? And I just thought, you know what, it would make it more awkward if I was to say, well, actually, darling, it's uh, it is morning. Like that would make it weird. Um, but maybe I don't know. I just like next time I see her, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Is maybe this, that's I think just it's part of, of her spiel. Maybe she's maybe she always works afternoons. True. And she got called in like last minute to do a morning, and she just kind yeah. of like in the have a great mode. afternoon. Yeah. I guess that happens in radio too. Like if you're used to doing the morning shift and you end up pulling a, an afternoon, you could accidentally say good morning. Yeah, I feel that. Mm, but you're just so spot on with your words, I think, is probably mm. where you were like, ooh, yeah. But it's like when you say happy birthday to someone and the person whose birthday it is to say, yeah, you too. It's like, <laughs> it's not your birthday, you idiot. <laughs> I've not heard that before. Yeah, or like when you're in the drive-thru, enjoy your meal. Yes, you too. No, they're not going to enjoy their meal. They're bloody making the meal, unless they're doing little snacks on the side. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. That's so funny. I feel like oh it's so God. common. And like you walk away from those moments and you're like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Gosh. I, I feel like I say really silly things all the time. Like I'm like, hey, Helen, how are you going? And I go, oh, my God, it's not Helen. It's not her name. What's her name? Oh. What's her name? And then I walk yeah. off and I'm like, oh, it's Judy. Hopefully yeah. she didn't notice. Yeah. Hopefully she didn't notice that you called her <laughs> Helen when her name's Judy. I'm pretty, I've got a feeling she might have, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, people, they say something and you're um, all up in your head, you know, and you you just, well, I mean, I do this a lot, but I've always blamed my ADHD. So oh. I'll just like say something really random, you know, like I'm, planning out my day in my head or whatever and I'm rushing around and like, oh, how are you going? And I say, oh, you know, three lots of vegetables. And I go, oh, sorry, I'm just like <laughs> reading out my shopping list in my accidentally. Head. Yeah. Um, what do you do when um, you know the face and you know you've had conversations with them and I think you may be like 10 conversations down the line, you know what I mean, and mm. and you don't know their name how, how do you figure out what their name is? is? Is there a technique? Because it's too awkward to say, hey, by the way, I know I've spoken to you about 10 times, but what's your name? I have real problems with names yeah. um, and I always have, but I can meet someone, <laughs> I can meet someone, you know, 20 years on and for some reason <laughs> I can still remember details of our last conversation, but I won't remember their name. Yeah. And it happens all the time. So I'll run into someone who I haven't seen for a while and I 
couldn't tell you their name, how I know them, no idea. But I'll say, you know, the last time I spoke to you, your dog was put down, you know. Yeah, you'll remember that. Yeah, Your dog's name was Spud and you told me that you buried him in the backyard. And they're like, God, how do you remember that? And I think... It's ironic, really, isn't it? Because I can't remember your name. <laughs> Maybe where it's I more know memorable you than your boring name. Yeah. <laughs> but I I have been um, practicing saying people's names back. Have you ever spoken to someone and they say your name at the start of every sentence? They're like, yes, yeah. George. Well, funny, George. And they say your name. Shazzy, yeah. I really admire that. <laughs> I, uh, have you I heard, do, though. Have you I had, love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. I enjoy when people do that. I admire someone who can, yeah, remember your name. Like I- I'm so bad. Like you could say, yeah, my name's James. Oh, okay, hey, James, nice to meet you, mate. And talk about whatever. Three minutes later, I go to say goodbye, and I've already forgotten the name. Um, which but it's is a technique. Shocking. Yeah, say keep saying their name through the conversation. Yeah, yeah. So say their name three times, apparently, and then it imprints. Um. Mm. I haven't really been practicing. Does it make that, us bad people if we don't remember the name? Like, does that make us ignorant or like shit people? I don't know. Why? Like, why, I don't it, even... why do we have to know their name so badly? Like, what's the? Why is there this standard that we have to know people's names hmm, and use? Know. Well, because it's probably name. polite to call someone by their True. actual name, not someone else's. Like <laughs> Helen, Helen Judy. Jane. Yeah. Judy. <laughs> um, Fair. Yeah, but I. Uh, There's an emphasis, isn't there, to really know someone's name? I think it's nicer. Better I don't know. Yeah, I really need to start practicing people's names um, mm. Mm, or nicknames. I can often remember people's nicknames, but I can't remember their yeah. their actual name. So yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah I don't know. The- on yeah. nicknames, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the spelling of Shezzy mm. is C H E Z Z I double Z, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, cool. Shezzy gets a lot of um different spellings over the time, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, I've had people come up and go, <laughs> "Your number plate," because I've got personalized number plates. Your number plate says cheesy. And I'm like, <laughs> cheesy. yeah, I've had a few people say that. Cheesy, yeah. uh, cheesy. Um, or like spelling it with a SH. I've seen that in comments, even though your profile literally does spell out your name. Like, it's so weird. Yeah, I probably don't even notice that, to be fair. Um, mm. It's a really random nickname. So, mm. it, yeah, it was Sheza for Mm-hmm. Shez, Sheza, I don't know. I have all kinds of. Sheza um, Danya. That's Shezar a bit of a mouthful. Danya. Well, it's better than Cheryl Rogers, which was my um, maiden name that I used to have to say at the end of my news reports. And I'd be like, Seven News. Yeah. Cheryl Very good for a news Rogers. report, though. Cheryl, Cheryl Rogers. It reporting doesn't. Reporting to ro- Seven. Oh, no, it doesn't. No, because you sound like Cheryl Rogers. <laughs> Cheryl, like you have a. Cheryl Rogers. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to say. So anyway. George Sargent is hard to say. George Sargent. You yeah, see, I don't find that as hard. I find it tricky to say my own name. Yeah. Do George you? Sargent. Yeah. It's Yellow a very news. it's a very um strong name. And and I think it's because of the sergeant part. Because mm. like you think of a, a sergeant in the army or a sergeant in the police force, don't you? Very dominant, very yeah. authoritarian. Have you asked your mum? And I'm sure that you haven't. Um, where did the name George come from? Well, I think from what I can gather and remember right now, um, both mum and dad were living and working on the land and, and love the outback and love the farm life. And George is Greek for farmer. Oh, that's right. You did tell me that. I think that could be one of the reasons why I'm George because I thought they were going to bring up a young farmer. Right. Um, how wrong they were. <laughs> I feel like there's a family heritage there. Though. I don't know why. There might be more to it though. Mm. I'll um, certainly report back to you. Mm. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, next episode, Grant is yes, back and we've got back. 
Grant has been doing all his research into um, all these different topics that he's very excited to share with us. Some of it goes completely over my head. Um, all right. Yeah. So. Does he... it involve male menopause? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Cool. Um well, I, that. Yeah. I have no idea. No, it's, he's really into um, some really interesting theories at the moment. And I think given the popularity of our chat with Ross Coulthard um, and some things shifting overseas, I'm excited to see, yeah, what he has to say. So We're going conspiracy next episode. I do Woo! like it when GD puts that tinfoil hat, hat on, on his head. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. It's a different side that you it only is. get here. It is. Um, thanks everyone for joining us and thanks for, um, George for bringing a new game. We'll have to try and line up some, um, some guests and, uh, do they have to be Maybe. well-known guests or can we get like some listeners of the podcast? It be cool. I think it would be mad to meet a, a listener every now and then, and we can kind of get to know them like basics, um, age, where they're from, their yep. name, just very simple details. And then for 30 seconds, they can just tell us their two truths and a lie. And then we, being the podcast called It's All True, yeah. should be able to figure out which ones are true. Yeah. We'll see how good a liar they are. I yeah. Mean, well, you're not you even a very good liar. Being a good, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be known for being a good liar, but in the context of this game, it's a bit of fun. Yeah. So send in... Um, Send George your messages mm. on Instagram exactly. uh, because otherwise mine will be left unread for weeks on end. Yeah. Um, send George a message on uh, on socials and why don't we get you to come on the podcast? That'd be fun. We'll give you a Ooh. prize. Oh, the neon sign be, in yeah. the background or the Grant Daniel bobblehead up there or the gold Logie. Let's give that away. <laughs> Great. That's right. Yeah, because nominations for um, the Logies are about to come out. So um, we could be getting another gold Logie. Who knows? So true. Yeah. So, oh, wow. um, but also I think the networks have to nominate who they want to put up. So, Well, surely that's going to happen. Should be Grant. Should be Grant. If um, not, we will riot. We will. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Be we love you. Be true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye bye. See you next time.